Boujou. Hello. My name is Daystar Rosalie Jones, and I was born in the beautiful Rocky Mountains of Montana, which is the territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy. And I now live on the shores of Ontario Lake here in Rochester, New York. My ancestry is Pembana Chippewa or Ojibwa or more properly Anishinaabe. Now Anishinaabe means the first man who was lowered to the earth. So the Anishinaabe live in the territory around the Great Lakes, uh, into Canada and the United States. And of course we were here before those territories became Canada and the United States. So we share this territory with the Haudenosaunee. I'm going to show you today the medicine wheel, the Anishinaabe medicine wheel. And I'm going to show you, first of all, a very traditional emblem of the medicine wheel. And this is made of porcupine quills that have been flattened and dyed, various colors, and they're mounted on a buckskin form. So sometimes we wear these in our hair or as a pendant, but so that you can see this better, I'm going to show you uh, the teachings of the medicine wheel through this Native American contemporary hoop. And this is a dance hoop. And if I came to your classroom or community center, we could learn this dance, the hoop dance. So the first thing about this hoop is that it is a circle. And it is called the Anishinaabe medicine wheel or medicine circle. Now, why is the circle important? Well, think about it. What out in nature is made in a circle? The sun is a circle or round. The moon is round or a circle. The earth that we live on is a circle or round like this hoop or medicine wheel. Birds' nests are made in a circle. So, the circle is very important, and if we bring this in front of us, it actually is the dance circle, and we dance in a circle, and we talk in a circle. So that is very good because it gives everyone an equal voice in the circle. So this hoop, also already has marking in the four directions. So a very important part of the wheel are the four directions. Now you need directions when you're going to go traveling. So you know if you're going east or south or north. So that is also in the medicine wheel. And this one already has the colors of the medicine wheel. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But in order to show this even better, I'm going to use another hoop, which is a different color. It's yellow with red ties. And this is very good because it shows that the red actually means the good red road that Native people try to follow in their lives. And the yellow actually 
represents the sun in the sky. The sun usually looks yellow. So you can still see the east, the south, the west, and the north. And I'm gauging where I am. And I've drawn a connection between these points. You can imagine yourself in the middle. So if you were standing in the middle, you could see all of the directions all the way around. So what does this mean? And why is it important? So if we think about the East, what happens in the East? When you get up in the morning, probably the sun is already up, but where does the sun rise? I'm sure you know the sun rises in the east and it's big and yellow and it brings new life and it's good for us and for plants and for animals and for, for everything. So, but as the sun goes around to its highest point directly overhead, it's very, very hot. So in the south, you could actually think of fire, and that's how it gets its color, which is red. So when the sun is very hot, it's thought of as red hot, right? And that's very good because what does that do? That makes the plants grow. And we have greenery and we have food for ourselves and for the animals. So, but the sun keeps moving and it moves along to the west. And what happens in the west? Now the sun is moving, but it's we say it's going down. We think it's going down. So in the west, what would that color be? Can you think of the color that would represent the sun going down? Well, it's twilight. And if you're ever out just before the sun completely goes down behind the horizon, sometimes it looks blue. The sky and the, the air looks blue, or it could be even black. So those are the colors of the West. And then the sun really goes down. So then you have the night. But the color of night is not black. Up here in the north, we think of the north as snow. And what color is snow? The same color as my hair. The snow is white. White like the snow and whiteness of the elders. And that means respect. So we give much, much, much respect to the elders because they have been around this circle many, 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 many times. So they know many things. And we should ask them. We should always ask the elders questions and let them tell us what they know. So those are the main points of, uh, the, of the medicine wheel. Now, why is it called medicine? What is medicine anyway? Well, for us, it's not going to the doctor and getting a prescription and going down to the pharmacy and getting a jar of pills, no. Medicine really is power. And what is power? Power is healing. Healing is power. So this medicine wheel is really a wheel of power because it's a wheel of learning and healing. So we all need healing in our lives. And 
I'm going to demonstrate that healing in another way for you. So again, think of yourself as standing in the middle of the wheel and you're able to see every, every direction and what's going on around you. And that's very, very important that you know what's happening around you. Okay, all right. So I'm going to uh, stand up and, and let me see more clearly the dress that I'm wearing. And this is a dress of healing. And it's called the Jingle Dress Dance. So, of course, there is a dance. Now, I will say that uh, this dance is not an old, old ancient dance. This is a very new dance. In fact, it's about 80 years old because there was uh, a sick child who lived in Ontario, Canada. And she was maybe seven, eight years old. And she became sick and nobody could figure out why she was sick. And so her grandfather had the gift of a dream. So the dreams come from the creator. So this dance actually came to him in a dream and he saw this dress and he was told that the girl should dance in the dress. Now, all of us have been through a year of the COVID pandemic. So many of us have been sick and other people have had to take care of the sick. Some people have died. So it's important that we give condolences to those who have lost their loved ones, relatives, friends, but also to give encouragement to those who have to carry on. So I'm going to uh, just show you a short dance uh, demonstrating the jingle dress. And it is said that the healing really is in the sound of the jingles. So you're hearing the jingles. And what do they sound like? Different people have different ideas of what they sound like. But to me, they sound like water, maybe a waterfall. And water is healing also. So this is the jingle dress that was given to the grandfather for the healing of his daughter. So thank you all, thank you to the Creator, and Ani, Buju, Miigwech, and I hope to see you soon in your classroom or in the community centers. Thank you so much.